assalamu alaikum students hope you are all fine and safe at your at your homes today we'll discuss about the connective tissue and in this uh, this is the part 1 of the connective tissue in this we will discuss only the general aspects of the connective tissue and then later on we do the classification the special forms of the connective tissue so we'll discuss what is a connective tissue what are its various functions what is the composition of the connective tissue the composition of the ground substance and the types of the fibers or uh, which are present in the connective tissue and the various types of the cells which are present now connective tissue is one of the four basic tissues of the body along with the epithelium the muscular tissue and the nervous tissue it is of the mesodermal in origin and it forms the matrix beneath the epithelium and it connects and supports the underlying the tissues it is highly vascular and it has the nervous content or you can see here this is the uh, adipose tissue or the hypodermal layer which is also the form one of the form of the connective tissue so it's a connecting or supporting framework for the various organs of the body now connective tissue performs the various functions of in the body but most importantly they support and connect other tissues the connective tissue sheath which surrounds the muscle cell the tendons at the attach to the muscles to the bones and to the skeleton that supports the positions of the body so it protects the uh, connect, uh, the in the form of the protection is also is a major function of the connective tissue in the form of the fibrous capsules of the bones that protect the delicate organs and the skeletal system now there are various types of cells in connective tissue but there are specialized cells which defend the body from the microorganisms and and thus provides the immunity it is also responsible for the transport of the fluid nutrients waste and chemical messengers is ensured by the specialized fluid connective tissues such as the blood and the lymph adipose cells stores the surplus energy in the form of the fat and contribute to the thermal insulation of the body now there are two main components of the connective tissue that is the extracellular matrix and the cells the extracellular matrix comprises of the ground substance and the fibers the cells there are various types of cells present in the connective tissue but these cells unlike the epithelium they are far apart from each other and they have a lot of the extracellular matrix in between them so the, as you know that epithelial cells they are closely adherent with each other but the connective tissue cells they are they have a lot of the extracellular matrix in between them and they are highly vascularized now the ground substance which is uh, present in the which is one of the basic components of the connective tissue is consists of an amorphous transparent colorless extracellular matrix and it has a high water content it supports uh, surrounds and binds all of the connective tissue cells and the fibers the basically the consistency of the ground substance it is responsible for how much the uh, connective tissue is responsible for the passage of the nutrients so the the uh, composition of the ground substance it varies in the different types of the connective tissue now it consists mainly of the glycosaminoglycan chains and the proteoglycans and adhesive glycoproteins the central core protein in which the glycoproteins they glycoproteins they are attached there is hyaluronic acid and predominant glycosaminoglycans present in the connective tissue so these proteoglycans they are large molecules they consist of 90 to 95% of the carbohydrates now there are various types of the cells present in the connective tissue but these basically are divided into two basic types that is the fixed cells or the resident cells and the transient cells or the wandering cells the fixed cells that is which have to be present into the connective tissue all the time or they remain there uh, in all types of the connective tissue they are the fibroblasts adipocytes right the macrophages 
the mast cells so these are the resident cells or the fixed cells of the connective tissue whereas the, the white blood cells or the leukocytes they migrate from the blood stream into the connective tissue in response to inflammation or other tissue damage so they are termed as the wandering cells or the transient cells or the migrating cells of the connective tissue so the, the these eosinophils the neutrophils the lymphocytes they are all the wandering cells of the connective tissue now the fibers which are present in the connective tissue they are the three types present in the five of the fibers which are present in the connective tissue the collagen fibers these uh, collagen fibers they are thick uh, bundles of the fibers they are wavy and they pro provide the tensile strength and the support to the connective tissue they are abundant in the dense connective tissue and they hold the structures of together so the where the tensile strength is required there the lot of the collagen fibers they are present for example in the tendons and the ligaments whereas the elastic fibers the elastic fibers you can see here these are the elastic fibers now these elastic fibers these elastic fibers they are thin they are thin than the collagen fibers and they are branching right they are long cylinder and thin than the collagen and they are branching and they have a elastic component in them so they are present in the vocal cords and the air passages and they are they are, uh, the protein or the microfibrils which are present is the elastin which give it's a yellowish appearance now the reticular fibers the these reticular fibers are thin short and wavy and they basically are forms the supporting framework or the network of the various organs and they are present where the tensile strength is not required just a framework supporting framework is required for example in the liver the spleen so the reticular tissue they form the framework of these organs and they these reticular fibers they are usually they are also called the ergyrophilic because they are stained with the silver stain so they are called the silver loving and they are called ergyrophilic so silver stains they are very uh, much useful to identify the reticular fibers now we'll discuss the cells of the connective tissue one by one the one of the basic uh, cell of the connective tissue the fibroblast which is uh, in the two forms you can see the immature or the active form or this is the fibroblast and the inactive form they are called the fibrocytes now you can see here the difference uh, in appearance of the two uh, cells in the fibroblast and the fibrocytes now these fibroblasts they are responsible for secretion of the extracellular matrix Uh, of the connective tissue and they are also responsible for the formation of the collagen fibers now you can see in the active fibroblast it has uh, uh, numerous tentacles like structures in it, in it and had lot of the mitochondria and other cellular organelles so it is actively involved in the secretion and formation of the uh, extracellular matrix and the collagen fibers whereas in the fibrocytes you can see that the, there is a flattened uh, cell with the, the little uh, or cellular organelles and the flattened nuclei now these fibroblast in case of the need they can be differentiated into the adipose cells or the chondrocytes now you can see here in this photomicrograph there are various uh, fibroblasts and the fibrocytes now you can see in the here that these are the uh, large ones they are the fibroblast with a lot of the cytoplasm and stain deeply whereas the fibrocytes they are uh, the inactive fibrocytes they are seen as the thin rods like structures with the flattened nuclei now fibroblasts they are also the targets of many families of the proteins called as the growth factors they are involved in the wound healing and they are they are called the myofibroblasts they are enriched with a form of actin found in smooth muscles and have a contractile function also 
so they actively participate in the forming the dense irregular scar tissue now another variety very important cells of the connective tissue they are the macrophages now these macrophages you can see here this macrophage uh, is as as a single nucleus um, and this uh, macrophages they are belong to the mononuclear uh, phagocytic system that is they are derived from the blood monocytes and they are the different types of the macrophages which are in the different uh, tissues in the bones they are called the osteoclasts dendritic cells in the nervous system and uh, in the tissues they are called the histocytes in the liver cells they are called the kuffer cells in the lungs they are called the alveolar macrophages so by all of them they belong to the blood uh, mononuclear system and they are responsible for the phagocytosing the uh, microorganisms any foreign body and they have the amoeboid movement and they play an important role in the engulfing and digestion of the cellular debris and cancer cells and so they play a very important role in the immunity that is they are responsible for engulfing the microbes and any other foreign particles so they are helping us with the immunity this is the electron micrograph of the macrophages now they play a critical role in non specific specific defense immunity uh, innate immunity and also help to initiate the specific defense mechanisms that is the adaptive immunity by recruiting other immune cells such as the lymphocytes they are important as antigen presenters to the t cells in humans the dysfunctional macrophages they cause the severe diseases such as the chronic granulomatous disease that result in the frequent infections so they play also play an important role in anti inflammatory role and can uh, decrease the immune reactions through the release of the cytokines so macrophages that encourage the inflammation they are called the m1 macrophages whereas those that decrease the inflammation and encourage the tissue repair they are called the m2 macrophages now there are various types of the macrophages shown here now this is a slide of the liver cell and in this these black ones you can see they are called the uh, liver macrophages or the kuffer cells so they are responsible for uh, uh, engulfing and phagocytosing the uh, any microorganisms which are present and any foreign particles from the, so the blood sinusoids here so they are lining the blood sinusoids then is the in the lungs you can see the alveolar macrophages and they will engulf and entrap any dust particles which are or any other foreign particles which are present in the layer so in the lungs they are called the alveolar macrophages now the in the tissues they are called the histiocytes now another very important cell of the connective tissue is the mast cell now you can see this is a mast cell and this is a, has a single nucleus central nucleus and there are a lot of the vesicles uh, present in the mast cells so actually it is full of the vesicles so in uh, hnd stain it stains basophilic and these granules they stain basophilic you can see and filled up with these uh, secretory granules now they are oval or irregularly shaped cells filled with basophilic secretory granules and these granules display metachromasia that they can change the color of the some of the basic dyes so the cytoplasm is filled by numerous large vesicles and these uh, mass of cells discharge the content jo uh, the discharge they come in contact with the antigens for example the proteins on the surface of an invading bacterium or in allergic reactions in response to the antigens found for example on the surface of the pollen grains so the substances which are released from these vesicles it is the heparin and the histamine so we they are, play important role in allergic reactions so they increase the blood flow in the close uh, by vessels 
and the permeability of the vessel wall to plasma constituents and other white blood cells by facilitating the access to the area. So mast cells facilitate an immune response to the antigens which trigger the release of the histamine and the heparin. So antigens, they will cause the triggering effect on the mast cells. The mast cells will release their uh, the secretions that is the heparin and histamine from these stored vesicles and it will uh, in increase the blood flow and increase the permeability of the blood vessels to the cytokines and the other constituents and in uh, initiate a cascade of uh, immune response. Now the plasma cells. The plasma cells, uh, they are the lymphocyte derived antibody producing cells, very, very important. So they are responsible for antibody uh, production. So they are large ovoid cells. They have a basophilic cytoplasm rich in rough endoplasmic reticulum and a large Golgi apparatus near the nucleus. The nucleus is eccentric and spherical. Many of these nuclei contain compact peripheral regions of heterochromatin alternating with the lighter areas of euchromatin. The average lifespan of the plasma cells is only uh, 10 to 20 days. Now the uh, leukocytes or the WBCs which are the wandering or the migrating cells of the connective tissue, uh, they de are derived from the circulating blood cells. They leave uh, blood by migrating between the endothelial cells to enter the connective tissue. So most leukocytes, they function in connective tissue only for few hours or days, then undergo the apoptosis. So we have discussed what is apoptosis. So apoptosis is a programmed cell death, which is carried out by the cytochrome C enzyme of the mitochondria. Now there are various types of the leukocytes shown here, the granulocytes and the agranulocytes. Now the, you can see here, the neutrophils, now these neutrophils, they will be responsible for the uh, acute uh, inflammation. So in the, if the uh, cells, they are coming from the area of the acute inflammation, that type of the connective tissue will have the lot of the neutrophils. So neutrophils, they will be in response of acute infections. And you can uh, identify these neutrophils by their multi-lobed nucleus. Now the eosinophils, the eosinophils, they are large and um, uh, eosinophilic uh, because they stain, uh, eosin, uh, they stain pink by the eosinophil stain and they, you can see the lot of the granules here. Now the eosinophils, they are mostly raised in cases of the parasitic infections. Now this is the basophil, you can see it is stained basophilic and a lot of the granules in it. So they are all, all called the granulocytes. Now the agranulocyte is the monocyte. The more you can see here the kidney shaped nucleus in the monocyte, which is large with a large nucleus. And uh, this is the lymphocytes. The lymphocytes are of various types. And these lymphocytes, you can see the large central nucleus with this, just a rim of the cytoplasm. So they are basically the wandering cells or the um, migrating cells of the uh, connective tissue. So in case of acute infections, you can have the, a lot of the neutrophils in the connective tissue. But in case of the chronic infections, you can have the lymphocytes and the granulo, granuloma formation even uh, the, in the cases of the uh, chronic infections. Then another cell types is the adipocytes. The adipocytes, they are also called as the lipocytes or simply the fat cells. Now you can see here these fat cells, they have an eccentric nucleus because all of, all of the cytoplasm is filled with the uh, uh, large globule of the fat. So the cytoplasm is shifted towards one side and they have a signet ring appearance. We'll discuss this uh, adipose tissue and we'll discuss all these lipocytes in detail because this is uh, forming a special for type of the connective tissue. So uh, these are specialized in storing the lipids as the neutral fats or less commonly for the production of heat. So you can see here, this is the hypodermal layer below the uh, dermis. And this is basically the insulating layer of your body, which conserves the heat of the body. 
and also forms the cushion and insulate the skin and the other organs. So this is uh, about the general connective uh, tissue, the general connective tissue. And uh, this, uh, you have just uh, know the basic, uh, what is the composition and what is the various fibers and the cells present in the connective tissue. Then later on, we'll discuss the classification and the special types of the connective tissue and each type of the connective tissue with examples we'll discuss later on. Thank you so much.